The Hard Truth, Season 10, with Akosia Konedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Echo Bank. Your goal uh, when you were in office uh, was to turn Ghana into a middle income country by 2015. No, it wasn't. Look, with the oh, original goal was 2020. 2020. Also. Then when we were assuming office, mm -hmm. even before the we thought 2020 was too far off. You dropped it down to 2015. 2015. Then we got in there, we took the HIPIC, we restored macroeconomic sanity, mm -hmm. and we allowed the private sector, the enabling atmosphere. So the economy became so sweet. Yeah, but uh, People, uh, in, investment started flowing. Let, let me ask, so, looking at the current situation mm -hmm. and economic indicators of the economy, mm -hmm. is, is, it, uh, is this the middle income status you envisioned or, you know, No, no, no. You we achieved the middle income status, even though at lower ranks, by 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. Ghana got there. So we didn't have to wait till 2015. So, so this current government, you know, brought us down, in your opinion. I d don't force me to talk like I'm politicking. Uh, let's talk. It's the hard truth. The so hard truth it about is my government. So I'm asking. About so my you government. got there. So, yeah, we and got then, there. Yes. so if, we are, if we are plummeting there from there, then it's up to has me. It you don't have to ask me to tell you. So it has. It's, it, what it's not what I expected it to be. How, I thought how, we would be higher up than where we are now. How would you then have described the current state of the economy? Uh, in which, you know, there's looking at the sectors. Could you help me? I'm listening. Could you help me? Tell me how you say it, because you are very well informed. I'm doing the, uh, I'm doing the questioning. Well, doing the I, I, I didn't come here to be quizzed like I'm in a doc. <laughs> I came here to interact with you. Yeah, we are interacting. Uh, to discuss and to converse. So I'm asking you, what do you see of the current economy? I, I'm asking because I, I need to know from you. What would you say that the important sectors, you know, looking at your own assessment, mm -hmm. how would you describe the current state of the economy? Coco hit and 20, which by 2010 or so, hit the million mark we predicted. What's the state of Coco now? I think it's back to about six, seven hundred thousand tons. It's a big drop. Hmm? Uh, the mining company, uh, the companies, I should say, uh, they are all, like, not in the best of shape. The oil situation, perhaps, is creeping up. Uh, so, what is it? So, which sectors, from what you're saying, which, which sectors do you think that government should pay more attention to? Go now. back go back to the economy, get it right. Because without the resources, economic resources, you talk of social interventions, and it's like vain talk. You want to give sound education. You want to give health care. You want to do the infrastructure seriously. Energy, everything. You need very solid economic base. We'll be right back. The Hard Truth, Season 10 with Akosia Konedu. Only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Echo Bank. Bank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Echo Bank 
is the Pan African Bank. It's a season finale of The Hard Truth, and we are proudly brought to you by Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank, former president of our Republic, Ghana. Uh, His Excellency John Ajikunku for is still here. Sir, during your tenure as the president of Ghana, you initiated several uh, interventions like uh, NHIS, capitation grants, uh, the feeding program, and, and, and the likes. Looking at the state of these interventions now, do you think that the current government has managed them well over the years? Perhaps it's not what I think that matters. It's what the people think. What would you say to the state of it now? Uh, from what I hear around, and again, even through the media, mm -hmm. I, I, it doesn't seem government is equal to the challenge. The people are not happy on any of these uh, interventions. We are talking of national health insurance, talking of school feeding, uh, talking of... Uh, Whatever, mention it. But there's hardly a sector in which you see the people saying, ah, we are with it. First, government talks about uh, like infrastructure development, uh, the flyovers. But I also say, if the dual carriage, for instance, had not been made. Then we have been that. Uh, and when uh, the, the Ministry of Roads says, that uh, the NPP government virtually doubled the, uh, the, the road systems of Ghana. Mm -hmm. All within the, that period of government, eight years. People say no. But I tell you, perhaps uh, people do not travel enough in the country. But uh, let me remind you, all the way from Kwame Nkrumah Circle, through to Kumasi, through to Techiman, through to Wenchi, Bamboy, Bali, incidentally the president's own hometown. All that road was made in, under MPP within that short period. Come back to Accra, take the George Bush Highway, Malam, all the way to Yamaransa, Central Institute. Come back to Accra, to Maranabout, the road towards a flow. So the and records, so many, the, so the many, records so many are things. there exactly but, but on so the uh, What I'm trying to tell right. you is that uh, our, our, our brothers, what, what, friends, what would you, they've been in power much, much longer than NPP. Uh, they always want to say the pa last past three years, four years, what they cover up or try to cover up, that they were in power from 92. We are not going back even to 81, 82 when uh, President Rowling took over. Let's start from 92. They were in power for the first eight years. NPP came the next eight, and they've been in power since 2009 till now. That's where the comparison should come. What have they done to compare with the eight-year period that NPP served? So, uh, I want to know, what would you love to have seen differently, especially when it comes to school feeding program and especially oh, NHIS? It's just a matter of uh, maintaining and sustaining all these policies. The policies were made for the people of Ghana. So do you think indiscriminately, we whether you are NDP the policy. or exactly. uh, NDC. We are do Ghana, for Ghana now understand. So a successive regime should come in to add to what they inherit. Okay. So they they, are do, not they shouldn't now. come to push aside what was already there and then to pretend that they were going to begin anything new. Mm. Uh, that's what's happening now, unfortunately. And unfortunately, uh, the current situation doesn't measure up. You made immense contribution towards yeah, yeah. restoring peace and stability mm -hmm. uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone mm -hmm. and Liberia. Mm -hmm. uh, but so there is, however, um, a new threat in blooming in the West Africa sub-region mm -hmm. uh, in the form of terrorism. Mm -hmm. now, well, let me ask you, do you think that there is a, a real, what's called, a regional collaborative effort in tackling uh, the issue now? I believe, I believe the ECOWAS is trying. It's trying. Uh, perhaps we need to analyze the situation a bit more critically because the forces uh, threatening the region or sub-region haven't been thoroughly studied. Mm. Uh, because I, I would think 
some of the forces come from far afield, far, farther afield than just as of region. Uh, if you're talking of um, the Boko Haram, mm -hmm. uh, the body that has come out publicly to swear, is it uh, alliance or allegiance to Al Shabaab in East Africa, which connects with ISIL in the uh, Middle East? And, and they have resourced. Unfortunately, in West Africa, the biggest country, of course, and perhaps the richest, is Nigeria. But even Nigeria is not yet out of the woods from these uh, threats. Mm. And so when you venture beyond Nigeria to the sub-Sahelian countries, Niger, Burkina, Niger, Mali, then descending even to Cote d'Ivoire, which is relatively uh, buoyant, strong, economically and in many other respects. We, we, uh, we, the threats are serious. And ECOWAS, I believe the presidents have come together to see what they can do. But uh, I, I would think that uh, the threats are not local, just localized to West Africa. It could be parts of threats to the larger communities of the world. Mm. And so we need a, 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 a collective effort internationally, uh, perhaps uh, under the the is it overall direction of the United Nations system to see how to uh, arrest mm. uh, the the canker. So that, at least we, uh, are we are, are we seeing steps of uh, tackling it here? If, let's say in Ghana, did you think we are doing uh, our best? Well, we, 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 the, the government yeah. assures us that the security agencies are on top of our situation. Let's support the efforts mm. of these uh, agencies to ensure that, uh, at least within our boundaries, uh, we do not suffer untoward um, upsets. Right. Um, the MPP elected uh, Nana as a presidential candidate mm -hmm. with the name of, you know, allowing him to start an early campaign. Yeah. Uh, yet about uh, two years uh, down the line in six months in general elections, the, mm -hmm. the MPP does not seem to have a clear campaign message. Is the MPP lacking ideas on, 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 on what campaign message to, to give Ghana? MPP never lacks ideas. But our trouble is that we tend to have too many ideas. And I tell you, uh, in terms of uh, human resources, and uh, also um, ideas for advancing Ghana. Uh, NPP, by our tradition, uh, by um, the, the track record, we proved it within the very short space of time. Well, what's the message government. now? What's the campaign message now, you know? Well, campaign message is to rehabilitate the economy, make it buoyant, and then to pursue the um, uh, social interventions with quality for the people of Ghana. We want inclusion, inclusiveness of the people of Ghana. We do not want to come in divisive. MPP has also been accused of going beyond the role of vibrant uh, opposition and keeping the government on its toes to, um, how would I say, churning out of catalog, uh, well with hairs, criticisms of government in power, just to score political points. No, no, no. no. Uh, that, that's the game of multi-partyism mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, you expose the defects, the shortcomings of uh, your opponents, especially if the opponent is the incumbent in power. Let people see where the opponent but, is failing uh, all around. Let, let me and ask, then, how credible, uh, I mean, let me ask you, how credible and different will the NPP be an alternative to the NDC? How credible will that be? You, that's why I use the word track record. You go back. They say it's an alternating system of government when you talk multi party democracy. Our brothers have been in power. When I say brothers, including sisters, of course. <laughs> they've been in power so long. They've been in power much longer than NPP ever was. Mm. And so we've seen all they've been able to do over there. Is it now about? Uh, of the 27 years or so since 92, 
they've taken about two thirds, maybe half a third. Look at what they've been able to do for the country over there, that period. And then look at what NPP did within the eight years. On this basis, you'd be able to assess whether when NPP promises to do it, they can do it or not. We'll be right back. The Hard Truth, Season 10, with Akosia Konedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Echo Bank. At Echo Bank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking, with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure while individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African, and EcoBank is the Pan-African Bank. You're still watching the season finale of The Hard Truth, proudly brought to you by EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank, from our president of the Republic of Ghana, uh, His Excellency John Ajakun Kufoa is still here. Sir, you're on record uh, to have said that Nana would win. Nana Dudanko Akufado, of course, would win the 2016 uh, general elections by some 58%. 56. 56%, thank you. And uh, you never pulled a 56%. President Rawlings never did that too. So oh, I think, I think Rawlings... And Mahama, uh, was it? didn't too. Uh, but in one of the elections, I think he pulled... Uh, the 57%. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, into my second term or so, I was said to have gotten about 56. But not to worry. Okay. I, I, I gave that figure out on some conditions. Which conditions? One, I want NPP to be reconciled with itself and to be united. I said, if we we'll do this, I see that this country this year is really crying for change. Mm. And obviously, uh, is the NPP that's the alternative to what's there. So NPP should hold itself together, should focus, and that if we'll do it, and given the circumstances, uh, more or less uh, driving the people to seek the change. If that then the would. NPP would perhaps just one touch, first round, Sir, isn't that, I mean, let's come to fact again. Isn't that a political rhetoric? Because, no, it isn't. you know, it, the party uh, is divided. Isn't. Where would you get 56 uh, 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 or even more than 56? It's not divided beyond repair. I've told you, uh, we happen to, it's a party full of individuals and full of ideas. Uh, anywhere you have such a collection, there tends to be always tension. And it's so all over the world. It's human nature. And so when you are like a, a retired senior uncle mm -hmm. uh, looking in a way f a bit from the sidelines, mm -hmm. you just go and talk down to your nephews and sons and brothers. Hey. Watch it. Watch it. Don't get carried away by your, uh, just because you are full of yourselves and you are ready for a fight. Don't think. Uh, you, you can get it easily, but hold together, focus, so you can get the trophy for the good of the country, because that's what the country is asking for. Sir, I, 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 I really want you to answer this. I, I know you, you don't want to go there, but please give me an understanding. Perception out there uh, that the genesis of the internal wranglings in your party is mainly because of conflict between pro kufu elements and uh, Akufuado supporters within the party. Paul Afoko reinforced these assertions of factionalism when uh, he stated that he belongs to the Kufo faction. <laughs> Sir, are you, um, are you uh, aware uh, of a Kufo faction within the party or within I've NPP? I've said it umpteen times that Kufo hasn't got a faction. 
Kufo is out and out MPP mm -hmm. man. Uh, I'm steeped in the tradition. I've told you at the age of 30. As I sit here, I don't want to disclose my age to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know your age already. <laughs> you know. Uh, so if I was 30 then, mm -hmm. and where I am now, and uh, that's my tradition, my uh, value system, everything. I, all, There's I, no Kufo I, faction. No faction. It's just Kufo and NPP. Kufo and NPP. I'm not in contest with a Kufo. Ado. I'm NPP. I'm supporting him. Suppose I even contested him today. And he won. The party selected him as our flag bearer. I'll support him today. Because I believe it's this side that can take Ghana to the heights I want Ghana to go to. There are a lot of people out there confused on who to vote for. They are saying, I mean, they want to vote for the MPP, but they're like, well, I, I wouldn't want to uh, spell my vote because the party is divided. Do you believe that the, the MPP can resolve its internal conflict uh, to present a unified front uh, for the December uh, 7th election, November 7th, sorry, election? Uh, let me be sincere with you. I'm listening. I'm working for, that's solid. This is why I told you earlier, that uh, I predicted the 56 percent and then told them, but to get it reconcile, unite, and then let the people see that truly you are ready to. Are you giving mm. yourself some timeline? So, when can we hear or see some? Oh, they say, form of they say a week the might even be a long time in politics. Oh. So, and look, uh, with all due respect, we've got some very intelligent people, uh, nation loving people in NPP. Mm. And so my prayer is that uh, we will work together for the success. So, like, what are your, sir, your general expectations of the upcoming elections? Generally, what are your expectations? Well, generally, again, it's not a fair question, but I'll tell you, you don't go into a contest not expecting to win. Mm. So I expect NPP to win. Mm. They should win. win. Quite handsomely, because it's the people of Ghana who are asking for the change. In the case, in the case, I know you didn't want me to say, but in the case, let me just ask you, in the case where MPP loses to uh, NDC again, do you think there is a likelihood uh, to experience another Supreme Court arbitration? Oh, it, it, will, it will all depend on the conduct of the elections. Uh, this is why uh, we, we are all trying to impress it upon the Electoral Commission to be truly impartial and fair for the sake of Ghana. So that uh, when the officiating has been... So in being fair, you want the Electoral Commission to be fair. What, what is that clear are we looking at here? Let the uh, processes be correct. Huh? Uh, it should be Ghanaian citizens voting. Ghanaian citizens. That's what the Constitution says. So the Electoral Commission should ensure that uh, uh, presiding officials are competent and committed and fair to make sure that people who will blind queue to vote are truly Ghanaian. If uh, there are suspects, it should be the presiding officers. It shouldn't be the party agent. Party agent is there. It might not even be there. Mm -hmm. But the presiding officer is the, 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 the electoral commission on the spot. They say the elections will be won at the polling station. It will be the oversightship of the uh, presiding officer that would give the fairness. So when people queue uh, without molestation, uh, without fear, and they cast their votes, and the votes are secret in an orderly fashion, and the count is done fairly and transmitted straight to the uh, headquarters for the results to be collated to be announced. Once it happens like that, People are satisfied. We, will all, we are all law abiding people. We'll accept the outcomes. But if, say, there will be any hanky panky, mm. that's where the troubles begin to come. Where presiding officers do not sign, uh, is it the, the is it pink sheets or whatever, and yet the sheets are counted. Naturally, people's back would be up. So yes, what is it? Some people, again, are of the opinion that. The attacks on the Electoral Commission by NPP is just a means of denting the credibility of, of, oh, of the EC please, so that uh, in the last or in the case please, where they, please, they lose uh, the election, uh, they the, will cry foul. When, when you use the NPP word will cry foul. Why do you it. use the word attacks? But, but that's not how I say it. 
listening. Where appeals, or rather, should be the word, to the electoral commission. Mm -hmm. We need to keep on reminding because, look, I happen to have been the chair of the African Union when the Kenya problems broke out. And I had to fly to Kenya to talk to the government side, the opposition side. Within a space of one month or so, over a thousand people have been slaughtered. And much property destroyed. Mm. We don't want that anywhere near here. So, and it all depended on a very faulty electoral practice or system. Right. And this is why we are making the appeal to the electoral. We know the institution is independent. That's what the constitution says. But the same constitution also enjoins it to be impartial and fair. That's what the appeal is for. We need to keep on reminding. After all, the commission is populated by people like us. The commission should keep on pinching itself, like I told my ministers, that they are human, they are accountable to the people of Ghana, they are not a law unto themselves. What would you say to everyone, to your party and then to the whole population at large? What, what would you say finally to them? Elections this come, what would be your final message to Ghana? Um, we should let the law work. We should all be law-abiding citizens. We should play it fair. We should respect the people of Ghana. Government should belong to the people. In fact, it belongs to the people. The people are the sovereign authority of this land. And all institutions within the Constitution belong to, to the people. So, uh, and we are the people. Uh, we, since we must seek our best interests as people, together as a nation inclusively, we should be law abiding, play our roles as citizens. When we are qualified and entitled to vote, we go about voting uh, with discipline. And then, once we, we, we voted fairly uh, and in order, that we, and the Electoral Commission has been truly fair and impartial, we accept the outcomes and live by the outcome. If it's not your chance today, it might be your chance tomorrow. It's trial and error, in a way, for me, building the nation of Ghana, for all of us. So the, my message is, yes, we talk peace, but peace invariably issues out of justice and fairness. Thank you so much for Thank talking you. to the High Trader. Former President of the Republic of Ghana, uh, His Excellency John Ajakun Kofo has been our guest and thank you so much for watching. My name is Nana Akusia Kunidu Asante Samuels and uh, this being the season finale of The Hard Truth and we are proudly brought to you by Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. Have a good evening. Bye. The Hard Truth, Season 10, with Akosia Kunedu, only on Vice at 1. Brought to you by Echo Bank.